Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. Yes, it's spelled with only one L, that confused me too. Located just under 50 miles north of the Grand Canyon, this remote area doesn't seem like it'd be the hotspot for anything, but that's just what it is. This gorgeous natural area is ground zero for the California condor recovery efforts in Arizona and Utah. One would be very lucky to get to spend a day here and see the recovery efforts in action. And in a related story, I am a very lucky man. It's early morning and the Peregrine Fund's California Condor field team is scattered all over the region with one goal in mind, find condors. And that is a goal I can get behind. A little cr more crooked than mine. <laughs> <laughs> he was cooking marshmallows on it last night. I was. Hot dogs and marshmallows. All the ones that were monitoring have transmitters, and some of the birds have GPS, some do not. So you have to go through every single bird. Every single bird has a transmitter, so I'm going through every bird's frequency. Okay. So that ping is a bird? Yep. The Yagi picks up directional um, signals, so you might be able to figure, like, hear the beep, but when you point the Yagi in the correct direction, it'll narrow in on what, where they actually are. When you're really close to the birds, you can get their signal without even having the antenna attached to it. She's soaring. The Yagi remains stationary, as mm -hmm. you can hear how her signal gets softer and louder. So that, that means the transmitter is turning towards and away. The main thing I've noticed, the longer that I work here, predicting their behavior is a lot easier and you can use the information that you already know about the bird to determine what they are currently doing. The more familiar you get with the birds, the more you're like, oh yeah, like they're home, they're home. <laughs> that makes sense. It's good for the rotator cuffs. At least the one. <laughs> It's been a productive morning so far, but unfortunately an approaching storm is threatening to put an early end to the morning's telemetry work. Might be a little less rainy. We want to go down into the burn area. Um, sure. There's that spot right by the um, cistern. Well, hopefully this just passes over quick and uh, we'll be fine. It didn't. With conditions not exactly ideal for field work, uh, thankfully there are some project sanctioned arts and crafts that can be done instead. We're preparing tags, vinyl wing tags, for the newest birds to come into the wild population in Arizona and Utah. Two tags per bird, one for each wing. Uh, we'll paint the same, same ID on each tag. That's the next step is to uh, stencil out the number and or letter combination and then finally we'll apply the paint and let it dry before applying on the birds. Three tags down. I don't feel like doing the math to go. So While the paint dries, there's more work to be done courtesy of some broken telemetry equipment. Was a bad connection in the base plate. Yeah, last week I spent a, a couple hours uh, Doing, doing some checks with the Omni and wasn't getting anything. I was really confused about it. And near like the release site or at the bridge, pretty much always expect to get a bird. After like three or four checks in a row with no contact, it kind of started to get suspect. I was able to troubleshoot it down to a bed, bed coax, but simple quick fix. Immediately afterwards, Jeremy was sent to the secondary um, field site in Utah. Thank you, yeah. This was unrelated. Um, I am told. I, last... The rain is finally stopping down in town, and so we pile into the truck and head for the field site. That looks fun. Yeah, that's dark. And run right back into the rain. Any chance we're going that way? No. no. <laughs> we're headed we'll right the forward. dark spot. And let's go there. So if we see any cows flying across the road, yeah. But as the hour-long drive to the top of the plateau continues. The rain clears, and a, we even get a rainbow for our troubles. And at the release site, things continue to look up. We are at our trapping site inside of a room blind at Vermilion Cliffs. We put out some carcasses for their wild birds. We just like to have them conditioned to 
come to the trap. That way, if they're sick or if they're showing, if we need to, you know, take them in for something, they're not going to be scared of the trap. They're going to come to us. It makes it a lot easier than chasing a bird around. Most of what I'm doing right now is just seeing who's here and making sure that they're, there's nothing, no strange behaviors, nothing that seems a little off, and um, making sure that all of their tags and call radios and GPS units are working. Gotcha. So who's here today? Oh, we got 193, Bird 1000 was here, 610, um, let's see, 844 is down there now. We kind of got a good day for, from what I've seen. All may be looking good at the blind, but over at the flight pen, not so much. Some rats have been chewing on the wires that electrify our mimic power poles. Basically electric fencing that runs on at low voltage just to scare the birds away from it. So hopefully when they're free flying, they won't land on an actual power pole and get electrocuted. Hopefully there's enough reach. Yeah. There we go. Now we're in business. Who wants to go touch it? Not it. Okay. Uh, got us. I'll just do some pull-ups. Alex never did those pull-ups. Come on, Alex. Not cool, bro. Yeah. It's now dusk on the Pariah Plateau, which means it's time for a highly nutritious dinner before we head off on our final task of the night. What is this building used for? This is our cabin. We stay out here when we are doing carcass drops on the rim and for the flight pen. And we stay out here in the winter for longer periods of time, three to four days, um, when we're trapping. So when we're grabbing the connors to do health checks and test them for lead poisoning. Okay. Ooh, fundraising so idea. So Put it on Airbnb, call it Rustic, and watch the hipsters from Portland fight over it. Night has fallen now, which means it's time for us to get back to work delivering food and water to the clifftop flight pen. But tonight has a few more surprises in store for us. I got a flat tire, a really low one anyway. Oh yeah? Do you want me to grab it? Uh, I mean, it's not too bad, but it is you. with Matt sitting on it. Oh, uh, for sure, that makes sense. It's holding me uh, back. I, can grab I don't it know if I want to deal with it, but. Oh, take the rat nest out. Oh, oh my god. Here. You're a chipmunk. Ew, why? You are not a rat. You're Ew. sweet and adorable. Come on, bud. Go ahead. Go ahead. Aww. Little buddy. Aww. You can drive? <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. Squatter evicted. It's time to fix the original problem the flat tire. And with the tire repaired, it's back to plan A for the evening. Delivering water and condor food to the field site. And with that, the evening and my time with the condor field team draws to a close. Sierra heads to bed, Tim heads down the mountain, and I start on a long journey home. But while you can leave this place, this place doesn't leave you. The scenic vistas, spectacular birds, and the indomitable determination of those who protect them live in memory forever. Here's hoping that the condors live in Vermilion Cliffs for just as long. <laughs>